you. Hallelujah. To just magnify the Lord with us and exalt his name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it. Let's try it. you. And God, on this day, God, God, you know each and every one. God, you know the expectation, oh God, that we have come to the throne with. God, you know the expectation, God, that we have gathered here on today. And God, we ask, oh God, that you do what only you can do, God. Only you can perform miracles. Only you, God, can be back the end of the enemy. And so, God, we thank you. And we praise you.
Oh. 
And that's all wonderful. In, 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 in the book of Isaiah 40 and 27, he made it clear, the prophet, that your way is not hid from the Lord. Amen. Your judgment has not been passed over by God. Amen. You might be thinking that I'm in this state. Things have not gone my way. I was looking for this to happen. I was looking for that to happen. I was talking to a friend very recently, and he said, Doc, we had it all wrong. I was saying that for 2020, we would have 2020 vision. He said, I had no idea a pandemic will come and shut down the entire world. Yes. He said, I got to admit, I didn't see this at all. But see, God sees yes. and God knows. Yes. And yet we were thanking the Lord for his keeping power. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank God that we are in the land of the living yes. and have a reasonable portion of health and strength. In our text, we have a group of 10 men, and they are leopards. Um, and the Bible lets us know in Luke 17, basically, uh, we know the history of leopards. They were untouchables. They were outcasts. Yeah. They were wanderers. They were homeless. And this happened to them because of an affliction that came on them. They didn't ask for it to happen. It came upon them. And as part of the law, they could not remain in the city. They could not remain with their families. They had to go out of the city and cry out whenever anyone saw them that they were unclean. Yeah. The only people they could hang with were, were other lepers. And here we have 10 lepers who are together. And the Bible lets us know earlier that he was going through Samaria and Galilee. And he came to a certain village. And he saw them and they stood afar off. And they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Yeah. And regardless of what you're going through, cry out to the Lord and ask him for his mercy. Yeah. Yeah. We don't deserve or earn his mercy. It's something out of his goodness. But every day, God pours out new mercies. Yeah. Yeah into the universe. Every morning there's new mercies that are bestowed and that's what we want to draw from. That's what yes, we want to gain from. Yes, we don't want to take today as if it's yesterday. We have yes. to know that this is a new day. Yes. This is a new opportunity yes. and God is pouring out new mercies in this universe for whosoever will. Why let new mercies go to waste? You might as well ask for it. You might as well take a hold of it. You might as well apply it to your life and apply it to your situation. Hallelujah. Regardless of how dire things may be, regardless of how negative it may be, God has poured out new mercies for us to take a hold of, and it's only by his compassions yes. that we are not consumed. Amen. Thank God that these ten lepers, they saw him afar off, and they cried out, Jesus, yes. Master, here they're letting them know that you're the head, we're, we're nothing, we're the slaves, we're the servants, Master, have mercy upon us. But what this struck me was that it didn't uh, deal with their calling on him. It says he saw them, verse 14. Yeah. He saw them. And we're talking about people who were insignificant, were people who willfully walked away and acted like they didn't exist and saw them as invisible and saw them as untouchable and saw them as outcasts and did everything within their power not to interact with them. And yet we see Jesus saw them. Jesus, even after his great discourse in the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, chapters 5, 6, and 7, we talk about the Mount of Beatitudes and the beautiful discourse that he has. As he's coming down from the mountain in Matthew chapter 8, the Bible says there was a leper. Mm -hmm. yeah. There were a lot of people around him, but a leper came and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Yes, yeah. He expressed his faith in God. He said, if you will, you can make me clean. Yeah. And the Bible says Jesus touched him. Yeah. Now, he didn't have to touch him because Jesus could have just spoke the word. Yeah. But Jesus chose to touch him. Yeah. And even though touching at that point was something that really was forbidden by the law because you could become unclean by touching someone else. But praise God, Jesus is never unclean by touching you. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. He is totally pure and infinitely pure. And so, therefore, he can reach out and in his touch is a healing touch. Amen. And his touch is able to make you whole. And he chose to touch touch this man and sometimes touch goes a long way for someone who's been ostracized someone who feels insignificant someone who feels lonely someone who has been rejected yeah, yeah. 
And even in the midst of what we're going through today, we have to be led of the Lord, but certainly touch is not out of the question, nor is the laying on of hands uh, expired. Yes. All right, praise God. Because God may move on you to hug somebody. Yes. But God may move on you to lay hands on someone. Yes. God may move on you to shake someone's hand and yes. speak the word yes. of authority in the name of Jesus. And you got to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so that you can be that broker, that instrument that God can use to bring about healing in these broken hearts and lives and also deliverance in people's lives. Jesus chose to touch that leper and immediately he was made whole and Jesus sent him to the priest. He told him, go your way, go to the priest and show yourself so that he could go through the process of being reinstituted back into the community. In this case, he saw them in Luke 17 and verse 14 and he just tells them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And the Bible says it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Hallelujah. And that's so beautiful to know that as they went, they were going to the priest and they were going in faith, being obedient to the word of God. God cleansed them as they were obedient. Sometimes he chose in this case, not for the healing to take place at the moment of his speaking, but of of the moment of their obedience. Uh And we got to understand that God sometimes is looking for you to do first. He's looking for you to act. He's looking for you to demonstrate your faith in him. And as you demonstrate faith, he will meet you along the way. The, The Jordan River did not open up when the children of Israel had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and they came to the Jordan and Joshua is there with the priest and the ark. The Jordan River did not split for them to enter into the promised land until the feet of the priest touched the water. As long as they were standing on the bank, those waters were flowing. But the moment they were obedient and stepped out and touched the water with their feet, the Bible says that the Jordan opened up. And they were able to walk through the Jordan River on dry ground. And that's like bookends. They went to the Red Sea to enter into the wilderness. They left the wilderness by crossing over the Jordan. And both of those waters opened through the miraculous power of God. But in this case, they had to step out in faith. Hallelujah. They had to act in faith. They had to be obedient to God. And that's how we have to be even in our giving, even in our praising. When you give, when you tithe, when you give your offerings, you're doing it in faith, praise God. Looking for God to move. You don't know how he's going to bless you. He will move in this way. He'll move that way. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. Praise the Lord. You never know how God is going to move and bless you through your obedience. But when you choose to keep your heart pure, choose to keep your body pure, choose to live right, God honors that. And when we honor him, he will pour out his glory and his grace and his favor in our lives. And so these ten lepers, they went, they were walking, and as they were walking, they noticed a change in their lives. They noticed a change in their hands and their feet. The pain they used to have, the things that used to go on, it was removed as they walked, as they followed God's command. And they kept, many of them, oh, in fact, most of them kept walking. Uh-huh. Praise the name of the Lord. And only one turned back. And said, before I go anywhere, before I go to see my family, before I go to see my wife, before I go to see my children, before I selfishly, hallelujah, move on with my life, i got to say thank you. i got to take a moment to thank you for hearing my cry. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. Thank you for seeing me. Hallelujah. See, it's it's interesting because sometimes we know God moved in our lives. We know God answered the prayer. We know God made a way. And yet, depending upon who we're talking to, we we, we might try to shroud the testimony. You don't hold back and hold back from giving God glory regardless of who you're talking to. It doesn't make a difference if they're of another religion. It doesn't make a difference if they're in a cult. It doesn't make a difference who they are. If you are talking about what God has done for you, give God the glory. Some of us, we hold back and say, yeah, it worked out for me. Well, yeah, it did work out, didn't it? Because he answered your prayer. Because you called on his name. Because you turned your face to the wall. Because you said, Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. Don't be messing around and trying to act like it was your own doing and your own power. It was the Lord's doing. I was talking to one of my relatives and I was telling her how great in fact, how this year has been in spite of, and it's all because of the goodness
Let's honor the Lord. I, it doesn't make me a difference if she believes in prayer. It doesn't make me a difference what her religion is. It's because of whose I am and who I am. And I'm going to make sure that I never try to crouch or cover what God is doing in my life. Regardless of who I'm talking to. If the Lord didn't see you, you would have been lost. If the Lord didn't hear you, you would have been out of here. But thank God God sees you and God Because I want you to know your condition doesn't determine your character. Your state doesn't determine your status. God is looking at the heart. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, give me a clean heart. Give me a mind to keep your work. Give me a mind to trust you in spite of what I'm going through right now. Let me not be determined to let what I'm going through define my faith in you. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. her handmaiden, to be her slave, and she will continue that role even when Abram and Sarah and the lot left uh, Egypt to continue. And the Bible lets us know in Genesis 16 that uh, Sarah will make up the decision to allow her maiden, this Egyptian woman, to uh, be involved with her husband in yes. order for her to produce a child and she would claim that child as her own, which was one of the traditions that were out there. But that wasn't God's plan. Yes. That's right. That wasn't God's plan. And Hagar was just caught in the middle, all right? She, she was just an instrument. We don't know what was going on with her. But anyway, once she got pregnant, she got out of pocket. Once she got pregnant, she got high-minded. Once she got pregnant, she looked at her Made and the person who she reported to and was like, hey, I got something you can't got. You don't got it. I got something you can't do. And I want you to know, you better be humble around your authorities. Yes, yes, yes. I don't care what you got going on. You might have a nicer car. You might have this or that. But don't be walking around as if you all that yes. and you still report to that person. That's right. Because yes, yes, yes. more likely than not, they're going to show their power. That's right. They're going to put you in, their, in your place. I know many of people who lost their job getting out of pocket over something foolish. They just came in with a nice outfit one day and all of a sudden they're better than their boss and walking around all smoothly and cutting them off in the meeting and before you know it, they're on probation and they're out the door. Because usually people in authority are going to show their power at some point. And, and one of the worst things you can do, unless you've got another job already lined up and uh, you are going out the door anyway, yes. is to cross them, mm -hmm. you know, and they get that whiff that you feel that you're superior to them. Right. Yes. Okay, it happens on every level, okay? Yes. Don't be looking at me funny. You know what I'm talking about. 
times to humble yourself. You want that job. You need that job, okay? It has nothing to do with how smart you are or if you're smarter than them or if they're a bigot or what they are, okay? You need that job. And so you use your skills to be a blessing. Well, anyway, she got out of pocket. She started walking around acting all wild. And, and Sarah said, oh, you know, I made a big mistake doing this. This is the worst decision I ever made in my life. And she told her husband, get her out of here. I don't even want this woman in the camp no more because she's switching all around here, acting like she's the handmaiden because she's been with you. And I'm wrong. It's my wrong. I've done wrong. But I don't want her here anymore. Yes. And... Um, and Abraham said, well, she's your servant, do, she's your slave, do with her whatever you want to. And as Sarah dealt with her harshly, um, Hagar will take off running. She just takes off, okay? No plan. Just quit. Running into the desert. Hallelujah. And the Bible lets us know that the Lord allows an angel to intersect with her. Yes, yes. Uh, Hagar, where are you going? Where are you been, first of all? Yes. Where have you come from? And where are you going? Yes. Yes. She couldn't answer either of those questions. She said, well, you know what? I'm fleeing from my mistress, you know, and, and he told her something that she had to do. He said, return and submit. Yes. Let's say it all together. Submit. Submit. I know y'all hate that word. You know, people that make the word submit a bad word now, mother. Yeah. Praise God. Folk don't want to submit to nobody. They even take it out the marital vows now. <laughs> don't even put it in there. I ain't submitting to my husband. That's true. You want to say no submitting. But the Bible talks about submission. And this is something hard. A lot of people make terrible mistakes, but they never go back. Yes, yes. They don't go back and apologize. They don't go back and say, I'm sorry. They don't go back and say, uh, boss, I really need this job. I'm sorry that I did this. Can you take me back? I know you haven't filled the job yet. Uh, they'll be up there, well, I guess I get unemployment for eight weeks and see what happens after that. You better humble yourself. And so she had to humble herself. The angel told her, return and submit. Amen. Praise God. Yourself under her, your hand. Because the Lord went on to give her a prophecy. I'm going to multiply your seed. You have a child also in your womb. His name is, should be Ishmael. Because God has heard you in your affliction. He's going to be a wild man. Yeah. Oh, and he's going to fight everybody. He's going to be always fighting people. Always causing commotions and stuff. But he's going to be a great nation. And then she says in verse 13. Thou God sees me. She was like amazed that the God of Abraham saw her, that God saw her Amen. in her state. Yeah. And she was like, what can I say that you have seen me, Lord? And, and she will leave and go back and submit herself. And eventually she will have the child and Abraham will have him as his son. Okay. But she said, God, you see me. Yeah. See, that this is her own personal experience with God. This yes. is not what she heard from Abram. This yes. is not what she heard from Sarah. Yes. This is her own. And she's totally out. She's running. She's doing. She, she, she's, she's a runaway at this point. But thank God, God saw her on the road. And God dealt with her. And she was so amazed that God saw her. Yes. Even in her error. Even in her wrong. God sees us in our error. God sees us in our wrong. Yes. God sees us when we're going the wrong direction. God sees us when we make bad decisions. Lord, you see me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not only do you see me, but you care for me. He cares for you. He gave her the solution. He told her what she needed to do. Praise the name of the Lord. And she went back and submitted herself to her mistress because of what God spoke to her out there in that wilderness. But she had a personal testimony. Lord, you see me. And I want you to know it's a blessing when you know that God can hear you and God will see you. That God, your way isn't hid from the Lord. You're not alone. You're not forgotten. He's with you all the way in the good decisions and the bad decisions. When you're making things that are messing things up and when things are going well. This is not a God that's just a fair weather friend. He's a bad weather God too. He'll be with you in the storm. He'll be with you in the night season. He'll be with you when you're bound. He'll be with you when you're down. He'll be with you when you're up. He's there all the time. Hallelujah. He loves you at all times. He cares for you at all times. Hallelujah. And the one leper, there were ten of them, but one of them went back and he said, Lord, I praise you and I thank you. Thank you for we're doing what you did in my life. And Jesus said, where are the nine? Wasn't it ten? Where are the nine? God expects us 
say thank you. God expect us to be uh, gracious and give him glory. When you know he saw you, when you know he heard you, when you know he answered your prayer, when you know he opened the door, the least you can do is give him glory. The least you can do is bless his name. His eyes are everywhere. The Holy Spirit is in the earth. He's going forth throughout the whole world to show himself strong on the house.
and put that prayer request in, and we'll be so happy to pray for you. And if you have not been serving the Lord, make that commitment today to serve Jesus with all of your heart. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he'll remove our transgressions and our sins from us. And once again, I want to thank each and every one of you who's been faithful in your giving through Give the Five, looking up Hallelujah Temple in our Forest, Illinois, or sending in your gifts, or going to our website at hallelujahtemple.org and pressing that donate button. This is good ground, and the Lord is moving. So be encouraged to know that God cares for you, that God sees you, and that the Lord will keep you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us to him be glory and dominion throughout all ages, world without end. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah Temple is a religious, non-profit organization. Our heartfelt thanks goes to everyone who continues to support this ministry, whether through Givelify or at our website at www.hallelujahtemple.org. Your contribution to Hallelujah Temple helps further the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Stay connected to us through our Facebook page for more words from our leadership.